What is naturalism? Naturalism is the worldview, brothers and sisters, that this universe is a closed box, okay? There's nothing outside of this universe, and if there is, it doesn't affect the universe. And everything inside this box, everything inside this closed universe, can be only understood by physical phenomena and physical processes. So supernatural doesn't exist. Zero. Well, you know what? This is the philosophy of many scientists, unfortunately, and it's the philosophy of many atheists, because no matter what evidence you give right into their face, they'll reject it, even if it supports the supernatural, because they have this presupposition. These are the lenses in which they view the world. So that means they never allow to entertain any evidence that would indicate the supernatural, because they have these lenses. It's time we took them off, because it's an assumption. It's like faith. That's why even the atheist, Professor Michael Rules, he said, let me make a concession to you. Naturalism is based on faith because they presume that there's no supernatural. And therefore, everything they see, they'll always ignore the supernatural because they presume it doesn't exist in the first place. So how can we show that naturalism, which is the worldview that there is no supernatural, which is the worldview that everything can be explained via physical processes, how can we, brothers and sisters, show that this is wrong? Easy. Just talk about yourself. Now what do I mean by this? Talk about the fact that you have a consciousness. Consciousness is not only about thoughts, thinking, taste and pain, but it's about the subjective inner experience. Like, I can have a strawberry, but the way this strawberry tastes and feels for me is unique to my subjective experience. For example, I have intentions, or, call, or what's called intentionality. I can intend to do something in the future, for instance. I intend to become a doctor, for example. Also, pain, the level and appreciation of pain may be different from me, even though I may have the same injury as somebody else. So we have subjective experiences, which is what it is to be like Hamza what it is to be like Hamza eating a chocolate or eating a strawberry. It's personal to me. Now, in neuroscience and in the philosophy of the mind, yes, we know consciousness is correlated, is somehow linked to the brain, but it is not the brain, and the brain is not consciousness, because you could never find out via physical processes that subjective experience. Let me explain this a bit better. Say I have a chocolate in my hand, okay? This is a chocolate in my hand, and I'm eating it. Now, the neuroscientists, they could find out that I'm eating something. They could even find out, brothers and sisters, that I'm eating chocolate. But they could never find out, ever, even if science advances a million years, they could never find out what it is like for me to eat a chocolate. Because this, even the language, what it is like subjectively for me is a non-scientific language. It's a non-scientific phenomena. It's immaterial. It's mental, not brain. It's mental. It's, it's my own personal experience. They will never be able to find out just by looking at electrochemical firings in my brain. This is what you would call the hard problem of consciousness. And this is something that Professor David Chalmers, he discussed in his book, The Character of Consciousness. And it's called the hard problem, which is that materialism, naturalism, physicalism, anything physical in terms of a process or function can never explain or tell us what it is like for Hamza to eat a chocolate. So from this perspective, we could see consciousness in the brain as different, but also in the following analogy. Take for instance a car and the driver. The car is the brain, the driver is the consciousness. If the car doesn't work, no matter what consciousness does, nothing's going to work. But also, if the driver is not working, then the brain's not working either. So we know they're both correlated, they're both linked, the driver and the car, but they need each other, for instance. Okay, there is this link. But, it's, but we have to understand that they are not the same thing. And a key way of understanding this is by talking about the hard problem of consciousness, which is, yes, Mr. Atheist or Mr. Scientist, you may be able to tell that I'm eating a strawberry by looking at chemicals in my brain, but you would never, electrochemicals in my brain, but you would never ever be able to find out what it is like for me subjectively to eat a strawberry. And that itself is a fact of consciousness, and that cannot be explained, brothers and sisters, 
by scientific or natural processes. And that's why in the book, The Character of Consciousness, Professor Chalmers, he discusses certain attempts by scientists and materialists and naturalists to explain this phenomena, and they've all failed. And he mentions certain strategies they use, which are failed strategies. The first strategy, he says, is they simply explain something else. The naturalistic researchers, the materialistic researchers, they basically say the hard problem of consciousness, which is what it is to be like, cannot be explained scientifically, so we just ignore it or we deny it. For example, you know, Professor Dan Dennett, he actually wrote the book, The Consciousness Explained. And Consciousness Explained in his book is very funny because he says he ignores the hard problem. He actually says it doesn't exist. Meaning that we don't, he's saying that we don't have subjective experiences, which is obviously false because we know we do have subjective experiences. So it's no wonder that many philosophers quote his book, not that it should be called Consciousness, consciousness Explained, but it should be called Consciousness Explained Away. <laughs> the other strategy, brothers and sisters, is to claim that subjective experience is explained by understanding the physical processes in our brain. But this is not true because how can any electrochemical activity, can, how can that tell us what it is like for me to eat a strawberry? This is impossible. Also, they won't be able to answer the following question, which is, how do these processes bring about subjective experience? How can just pieces of matter put together produce a subjective conscious experience? The other strategy, brothers and sisters, is that they try and explain the structure of experience. But this doesn't tell us anything. Because they don't, it doesn't tell us why there should be experience in the first place and how subjective experiences emerged and how can we assess what these subjective experiences are in the first place. So from this perspective, science and materialism and naturalism can never, never, ever tell us the hard or give us the solution to the hard problem of consciousness. Yes, it can tell us that we're having thoughts, that we may be having pain, that we may be dreaming, but it could never tell us what it is like for me to dream, and it could never tell us what it is like for me to eat a chocolate or what my level of pain actually is for me subjectively. Science and physical constructs can never, never tell us these things what it is like to be me, what it is like for me to eat a chocolate, what it is like for me to tolerate pain, what it is like for me to dream. This likeness, what it is to be about, can never ex be explained physically as we discussed. And that's why even materialist, naturalist neuroscientists like Christoph Koch, he says the following. Well, let's first forget about the real difficult aspects like subjective feelings because they may not have a scientific solution. Also, neurophysiologist John C. Eccles, he said, I maintain that the human mystery is incredibly demeaned by scientific reductionism, meaning, meaning everything could be reduced to physical process. And that's true because to claim that everything can be reduced to physical parts and processes means that you're going to deny your own subjective experiences, which you can't because they're a fact. So just to end this point, we see that naturalism fails as a world view because it says everything can be explained via physical processes. But we know this is not true because of consciousness, because the hard problem of consciousness, which is what it is to be like Hamza, what it is, is to be like Hamza eating a chocolate. What is it like for Hamza to eat a chocolate? What is it like for Hamza to dream? What is it like for Hamza to tolerate pain? This subjective experience can never be explained by physical processes as we just discussed. Therefore, naturalism fails because naturalism is the worldview that everything can be explained by physical processes, but it can't even explain the hard problem of consciousness as we discussed. It is no wonder that analytical philosopher J.P. Moreland in his essay, The Argument from Consciousness, he expresses similar views. He said, the truth is that naturalism has no plausible way to explain the appearance of emergent mental pro properties in the cosmos, meaning how consciousness ar arose, how the subjective experience can be explained. And he quotes Ned Block, and, he's, he con and he basically says that Ned Block confesses that we have no idea how consciousness 
could have emerged from non-conscious matter. And Ned Block says, we have nothing zilch worthy of being called a research program. Researchers are stumped.